Hello and welcome to The Widow's Oil. Today I am going to discuss something quite shocking that I've come to understand and um, think of lately and which I'd like to share with you. And that is that the doctrine of Balaam in our day manifests as Christian Zionism. Now, if you look at Revelation 2 and 3, you will see you've got there your seven churches. And I wrote an article on my blog in which I explain that these seven churches actually show us the process of apostasy. I will link this article below and you can go read it. It is called How the Figs Rot. And what I said there is I have seen that the first five churches in Revelation 2 to 3 paint the picture of the slow and gradual process of apostasy. The leaven is already attacking the very first church, Ephesus, who put up a good fight. Severe persecution follows, which we read of in Smyr Smyrna. Then in Pergamum and Thyatira, we see gross error being embraced more and more. In Sardis, they are so far gone that they are in danger of being totally cut off. The final two churches describe the two groups that emerge from this process. This is the modern equivalent of the two baskets of figs that Jeremiah saw. Jeremiah 24, verse 1 to 2. The Lord showed me, and there were two baskets of figs set before the temple of the Lord. One basket had very good figs, like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very bad figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Now, I end off by saying that one can also see through all the five churches how there is a faithful remnant, which ends up as Philadelphia. So it says, yeah, we either end up as like Laodicea or like Philadelphia. You can go and read the whole article. And then it, I wrote, the only way to be Philadelphia is to hold fast to the word of God alone. Now, if we work from this idea that the seven churches are progressively being infiltrated by more and more leaven and false doctrine and false teachers and Judaizing, then we can start to understand the doctrine of Balaam. We see yet already in Ephesus, even though they um, tested the spirits and they, they saw who were false apostles and they couldn't bear them and they found out who were liars, they were testing the spirits. Nevertheless, they had the deeds of the Nicolaitans among them. And then, yeah, we also see yeah, in the this Pergamum, they already have the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And there is where you first time, yeah, in Revelation 2 and 3, see the doctrine of Balaam. Now, we will look in detail at all we can learn about Balaam. For now, I just first want to show you that you have, yeah, this doctrine of the Nicolaitans and the doctrine of Balaam. So now we can look at this doctrine of Balaam. Um, we, we read there, it says, the message to the church in Pergamum, but I have a few things against you because you have there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Now here we see the doctrine of Balaam is identified by the following fact. It speaks here of to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. Now if you just go down to the next church, Thyatira, you had there the false prophetess called Jezebel. 
Christ said, notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you suffer that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed unto idols. So you can see there's a connection. And so this doctrine of Balaam is the same. It has the same effect as this woman Jezebel this false prophetess and you can see after the church this church where they have what is called the depths of satan revelation 2 verse 24 but as but unto you i say and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine so the doctrine of jezebel which is the same as balaam it has the same outcome and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. So in this church here, basically this doctrine that teaches this fornication that leads to idolatry and fornication, it's not just a doctrine now, it's actually institutionalized here. A woman stands for a religious system. So, yeah, it's even worse than in the previous church. It's not just a doctrine. It's now institutionalized. It is what they are teaching. And now if we look at our churches today and our world, we see the Christian Zionist doctrine come in and become the predominant one. And in this, we are seeing spiritual adultery. We're seeing a mixing of Christianity and Judaism. We are seeing a mixing of all forms of religions together. That is spiritual fornication and eating things sacrificed to idols. That means false doctrine. False doctrine on in the spiritual sense. Don't think carnally people. Don't think of physically um, sacrificing to little statues because then you're going to miss it. You're going to think it's somewhere in the past. Yes, those things are valid. They did happen. But that is not what it ultimately means spiritually. Judaizing is, for example, that. That is idolatry and eating things sacrificed to devils because it's doctrines of devils. And the doctrine of Balaam, Balaam, was a false prophet. So he's a type and shadow of a false prophet, of which Jezebel also is the prophetess, the false prophet. They are all symbols of the false prophet. So once you've got a false prophet that is teaching this, and this false prophet doesn't mean a single person. It means it's basically a spiritual system. And if you have eyes, spiritual eyes you will you will have seen it in the christian churches it's actually starting to go over now into even a worse overdrive where it's not just this jezebel um because jezebel is basically the the church um giving itself over to this worship which is basically Baal worship because Jezebel and Ahab were busy with Baal worship and they persecuted the true prophets. And that's exactly what we see in the church and have been seeing. But it's going to go into a further overdrive with Christian Zionism where we will actually have even a worse system, which is this Zionist doctrine, which will totally take over the church in the years to come so you're basically going to see a split the the you can see here uh, in the church of sardis which is almost dead after jezebel taught there it says here uh, regarding jezebel i will cast her into a bed which basically means a sick bed and it says i will kill her children with death so this sickbed is spiritual sickness. 
it is the Lord spoke about it in the Old Testament, how he said the whole body from the top to the foot is sick with festering sores. This is the state that the church is now. It's fully leavened. So this is the sick bed. So the next stage is killing the children. Now I'm speaking of spiritual killing. Even though there is a lot of physical death going on through certain things that have happened in our world since 2020. So these things need to be seen spiritually, but they also happen physically. Both are true. But if you just look at the outward, then you miss the point. Then you become confused. So this is speaking of spiritual death, meaning false doctrine will cause them not to have life in them anymore. By denying Christ, we have spiritual life through Christ alone. And by falling from grace and returning back to the mire which we came from so this is the spiritual death that will come the way i'm seeing it it comes in two ways the children either become secular or they actually fall from grace and go back into judaism and into law keeping keeping the law cannot raise you to spiritual life because Paul said the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And Christ himself taught that. It doesn't help to say that you are of the seed of Abram and that you are Jewish or that you are Torah keeper or that you keep a certain number of laws that cannot give you spiritual life. The life is in Christ alone. Now, yeah, is Sardis. This is how the church looks after this false prophet has gone through it and done her deadly work. The Lord says to Sardis, you have a name that you live and are dead, dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. There are still some people, yeah, in Sardis that can overcome and will be will overcome but most will be cut off and so then you'll end up with basically the the good figs those that held on to the word and then the rest which would be Laodicea but I wanted to show you the link between the false prophet Jezebel whose children will be killed with death and then the next stage in Sardis, you're basically repeating that, that spiritual death is waiting. Now if we look at the other places in the New Testament where we read of Balaam, besides in Revelation, we find two places. The first one is 2 Peter 2 verse 15 where we read, about the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Now we read in the Bible, the wages of sin is death. So this doctrine of Balaam leads to spiritual death. And what did Balaam do? We will look at that in the Old Testament. He was a false prophet, a hireling. He prophesied and was a prophet for money, for wages. So that's why he loved the wages of unrighteousness. So he was worldly. He wanted physical um, wealth. He was willing to prophesy for money. And this is what we read here that Peter told us. He loved the wages of unrighteousness. So he was a hireling. But also spiritually he was short-sighted because we read the wages of sin is death and Balaam didn't think of the end. He only thought of his immediate gratification. Then in Jude, Jude 1 verse 11, 
Woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. So Judea is speaking on the judgment of the false teachers and he um, takes Cain, Balaam and Korah as types, types out of the Old Testament of these false teachers. And he also links Balaam to being greedy and, and running greedily. In other words, being covetous, covetousness, which we read of in the Bible, covetousness is idolatry. So yeah, in Colossians 3 verse 5, we actually read this. Covetousness is one of the things we should avoid by what is called mortifying our members. That just means daily crucifying the flesh. So covetousness, which is idolatry. You see, there's this list, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. In other words, loving things of this world too much. Covetousness, which is idolatry. So Balaam was covetous, and it's linked to idolatry. And we see also this fornication and uncleanness and this love for materialism. So this is what Jezebel is connected to, is materialism sexual immorality and idolatry. Jude calls it the error of Balaam, the error. So let's look at that word error. So we see it means fraudulence, straying from the truth. Don't use the word orthodoxy because you're going to get the wrong idea. Straying from the truth, deceive, delusion, error. To me, this word delusion is very important because in 2 Thessalonians, Paul tells us about the strong delusion and Balaam is connected to the strong delusion which comes on people because Balaam is a symbol of the false prophet. Now, this word's root actually also has interesting meaning. It says there, it comes from a Greek word which means an imposter or a misleader, deceiver, seducing. And it also actually has the meaning of roving as a tramp. Remember Cain? He became a vagabond. Very interesting, all these words. The words um, that you can look up on the Esword often give you great insight. Now in this study I'm trying to be very um, thorough and make a thorough study to prove that the doctrine of Balaam is with us and it manifests as Christian Zionism and it is um, part of in our day a movement of a spiritual false prophet False prophets, there are myriads of them. If you go on your computer now and you go and look and you look at the end time signs, you will see all the false prophets. And then you've got the false teachers that are teaching this. And they are not always easy to spot because they are all working together to bring about this delusion. It is the spirit of error in them. That's why it is the error of Balaam. The spirit of error is working in them, and they reject the truth because they did not receive a love of the truth. Therefore, God sends them strong delusion so that they will believe the lie, and they operate under the spirit of error, all of them working together. Yeah, in Revelation 17, we, we know that, um, I don't want to go in all the details, I'm just merely speaking spiritually here, so I'm not pointing to any prophecy, I'm speaking spiritually to explain to you, it says, all of them 
have one mind and give the power and strength unto the beast. So I want to see how, I want you to see how in our world at the moment, everything is converging to having this one mind. And the word mind there means cognition, resolve, advice, agree, judgment, mind, purpose, will. So all those meanings. So basically, everybody is thinking the same. People are all starting to agree in one. One mind is slowly starting to form, which gives the power away. So people do not renew their minds to form the mind of, mind of Christ. They now have this one mind, which is sort of a hive mind. We speak of the hive mind um, in our everyday life. Um, and everybody is thinking the same. And if anybody thinks differently, then they get persecuted and shunned. So you saw what happened in 2020 when certain things happened, how everybody just went along and did things which really don't make sense. And the people that stood against it got into trouble. It is the same as what happened with Daniel um, and his friends when they had to play, when music was played and everybody had to bow to the statue, then the young men stood out like a sore thumb because they were not bowing, you see? So it's the same thing. Everybody bows to a collective force, which is the spirit of disobedience, which it comes from the enemy and which forms this hive mind where everybody thinks the same and does the same. Even if they don't agree through fear, they bow to this. And what happens is it serves to separate the sheep from the goats and then the sheep get persecuted so that's basically how it works so this doctrine of Balaam is very um, important it's not just something that happened 2000 years ago it's a spiritual concept now in part two I will go look at the teaching of Balaam in detail and show you how it corresponds to our, the modern day teaching of Zionism, both Jewish and Christian Zionism.